कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, loan approval requirements won't be relaxed. Seasonal ban on Kawakawa and Donu lifted. And Ministry apologizes for delay in social welfare payments. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. The NZ Bank in Fiji says it's not going to relax loan approval requirements just because there's a lot of money sitting in the market. With liquidity expected to hit the $1 billion mark in a few months, ANZ Fiji country head Saad Minam says they will continue normal operations. According to the Reserve Bank of Fiji, liquidity level is at around $956.4 million as of yesterday, which means banks won't need to attract high deposit. Koroi Tandulala reports. Speaking to FBC News, the Blue Bank says it will still assess a business or individual's ability to repay before lending. Liquidity can be there, but doesn't mean that, yes, if the liquidity is there, the people who should start you will be borrowing it. We need to have discipline. We need to have some certain requirements. However, while responding to questions sent by FBC News, RBF says with more money available in the market now, banks can lend without needing to attract additional deposits by offering higher deposit rates. Therefore, the cost of fund will fall and they should pass on the benefits to customers in the form of lower lending rates. ANZ Fiji country head adds banks are in a dilemma where money in the market is not earning interest, but lending institutions are unable to ease their requirements. He says banks need secure investments. We need to look at the circumstances, situation today. Are there normal times? No, no, they are not normal times. I'm not saying that, yes, we'll close our eyes and whoever comes in will take the money and go. No. That's not how it's going to work. While RBF cannot directly regulate interest rates in the market, they do, however, influence commercial bank interest rates indirectly through their monetary policy stance. RBF's current monetary stance through increased banking system can help put downward pressure on interest rates. ANZ says businesses, individuals and banks need to understand each other and find common ground. Kuroi Tandulala, FBC News. The seasonal ban on kawakawa and donu fish species have been lifted. The Ministry of Fisheries made the decision following consultations with the government. Apanisa Wangarandovo reports the ban is being suspended after taking into consideration the plight of Fijians who rely on these two species for their livelihoods. The Ministry of Fisheries says many people had lobbied for the early lifting of this year's ban to mitigate the impacts of COVID-19. But the normal ban period is from June to the end of September, which is four months. So in order to assist uh, the resource uh, owners, traditional resource owners, and uh, the economic uh, assistance that it can provide uh, within our economy, uh, government uh, has decided to reduce the, the months that the ban uh, will be left in place. The minister says the ban during June to July was sufficient and therefore the remaining two months have been taken away. Vendors at the silver fish market are hoping that Kawakawa and Donu will revive their business which has been severely affected. Because most uh, Kawakawa uh, buyers, they are absent from this market when it was uh, banned. And uh, we feel it. We feel it here in the sellers. Uh, we feel that most of our customers are not arriving here to buy fish. Marawai says vendors are pleased with the decision taken by the government. I think it's the best idea the government has uh, come around with. Uh, because, uh, because of the current situation. Eh? The lifting of the seasonal ban is for this year only, and the ministry is urging the fishermen to be mindful of their catch to ensure the two species are not exploited. Apinisa Wangardovu, FBC News. The Social Welfare Department has admitted there was a delay in depositing the recipient's allowances on Wednesday. Minister Marisani Vuniwanga says her ministry is undertaking three programs simultaneously, and it's a big task. Sanyani Mboyla reports. The transition from Westpac to BSP account, the top-up initiative from the Australian government and the recertification program have kept the ministry staff busy, hence the delay in depositing social welfare allowances. 
we've uh, been you know really engaged intensively on a daily basis um, so uh, the, the processing of uh, accounts every month the, the, it's quite a process to get to the bank accounts eh? so yes there was a delay and uh, it's unfortunate and we do apologize for that some recipients have recertified and are yet to receive their allowances Buniwaga has assured these people they will be reimbursed names have been dropped that's a fact they may have filled out the certification form in time, but they didn't get the allowance. We've been advertising four numbers. I'll also give my number, 9908166. For those who have recertified but still didn't get the allowance, please give us a call. We will make sure that you get your allowance. She is also urging the remaining recipients who are yet to submit their applications to do so. They need to come in and recertify. They need to fill out the forms. There's about uh, over 10,000 people that need to come in. Not why we train the exercise is like to look at you know current recipients and make sure that because we have experience of people who have passed on, but uh, we are not aware of, and so that's one of the reasons why we are doing this exercise. The Social Welfare Ministry currently provides financial assistance to over 77,000 recipients under its various social welfare schemes. Sainiani Mboila, FBC News. A 70-year-old woman is dead following an accident at the Matani Korovatu Rail Junction in Asinu this morning. The woman was allegedly hit by a bus driven by a 48-year-old man. The victim, who resides in Baulevu Nausori, was crossing the road when the alleged incident occurred. The driver is being questioned as investigations continue. The road death toll currently stands at 19 compared to 30 for the same period last year. A majority of Fijians registered with the National Employment Centre have lost their jobs as the pandemic has impacted the operations of partnered employers. This prompted the Employment Ministry to organise its inaugural Open Market Day as a platform for the registered clients to sell their handmade products for sustenance. The initiative is in line with the Ministry's effort to create income-generating opportunities for these Fijians. Josiah Nanunga has more. 23-year-old Felipe Vuetaki was a seasonal worker and says he cannot re-engage with his New Zealand-based employer due to border restrictions. I recently returned from New Zealand and supposed to go back, but it's still on hold due to the pandemic. I have utilized our piece of land in Mau for commercial agriculture and I came to sell my first harvest. Waisake Rawainranu and Lasarovota, both from Rakiraki, are jobless for three months now. We are registered net clients and they assisted us to secure a job. In these trying times, we have partnered in selling seafoods and fish. We are really grateful for the opportunity presented by the ministry, which has given us hope fighting back against the impact of COVID-19. Civil servant retiree and registered senior volunteer Riyama Pareti is encouraging Fijians to come out of their comfort zones. I'm with the idea and uh, I love... Uh, reaching out to people and helping them out. Uh, in this way, I found that uh, it is something that uh, it has enabled me to occupy myself, keeping me engaged. The idea of having an open market day, such as today's event, was initiated to provide a platform for our unemployed Fijians and existing entrepreneurs to showcase and sell their products to benefit their families or community. Hundreds of Fijians flock to Kuna Park to take advantage of the Fijian-made products sold at an estimated 30 stalls occupied by entrepreneurs and NEC clients who felt the impact of the pandemic. The ministry is optimistic that market open day similar to this will roll out in the Western Division over the next few months. Chosayi Nanunga, FBC News. Up ahead, more awareness needed to stop child trafficking and no more breaches at PRB Flats. By today, we are ready for that. We are ready for that. Radio Fiji 2, the country's dharkan.
Save the Children Fiji is calling for more awareness in local communities regarding the issues of child trafficking. After the latest report of the youngest victim being an 11-year-old, the NGO was concerned with the way information is relayed to communities and families. Venina Rakautonga has more. It is concerning to note that many people in our communities are not aware of child trafficking issues. I do recognize that, uh, you know, child trafficking is really quite a sensitive issue at the moment. Um, there's a lot of misinformation within the communities. That is what we have noticed uh, as we go into the communities and talk about trafficking um, issues. We have uh, noticed that communities don't really have a good uh, understanding of the issue. Um, they are, they're not able to recognize when it happens um, until it's too late. Ali says children are mostly targeted by traffickers because of their age and vulnerability. So at this point, for us, you know, it's a very worrying trend. Uh, we have noticed that particularly with children being as young as 11, 10 year olds being trafficked domestically. Social Welfare Director Rupeni Fatiaki says child and human trafficking is no longer only an international issue, but it is happening among us. We have several cases like that that have been reported. Some of them have been lured from Suva to the north. Some from has been lured from the north. Save the Children Fiji and the Social Welfare Department will now work closely to educate Fijians in an effort to stop child trafficking. Venina Rakotonga, FBC News. The Construction Industry Council believes the existing national building code is not being enforced properly. President Gordon Jenkins claims some building standards are not up to par as the contractors are not following proper guidelines. Kritika Kumar reports. The Construction Industry Council is blaming the local authorities for not enforcing the National Building Code. OK, maybe they don't have the uh, resources to do it, but, but it could be a, um, if it's an engineering problem, it, it, maybe you get an engineer's opinion about it. But then the person that has to enforce it is the, is the local body. However, local government minister Premila Kumar clarified it's not only the responsibility of the authorities to ensure rules are followed, but the entire construction industry must understand and implement the building code. Look, for the National Building Code, uh, I, I personally believe it's not just the municipal council. Yes, they should be, but along with them are the other professionals who are involved in the construction industry. Kumar adds the code defines the minimum standards for the construction of buildings and the materials that needs to be used. When you have the engineers on board, the architects uh, and the construction company, they all should be aware of the National Building Code with municipal council staff who are assessing the plans or who are uh, issuing the completion certificate. The building code was supposed to be reviewed every five years, but this has not been the case. The CIC is now reviewing the code. A major component of the review will be looking at access into public buildings for people with disabilities. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The Public Rental Board has not recorded any new breaches of the tenancy agreement compared to past months. Acting General Manager Patrick Veo says with the nationwide curfew and frequent monitoring of activities at the PRB estates, tenants are becoming more responsible. Kelly Vavala reports. Some of the issues the PRB now needs to look at is loitering at old hours, proper disposal of rubbish and the maintenance of individual units. People are sort of abiding by the tenancy agreement. I think it is hard time and uh, we don't uh, want un unnecessary breaches. Not like uh, uh, earlier. Uh, and at the end of last year. A number of tenants have recently moved out following eviction notices. Some were in areas while others were not eligible to live in PRB flats as they exceeded the income threshold. I suppose it's around 120 at the moment because uh, for a few, uh, for, for some that we have uh, given uh, initially, they, some have uh, voluntarily moved out. Housing Minister Pramila Kumar had earlier stated that all eviction notices were put on hold due to the pandemic. Ensure that the PRB, or for that matter, HART, or even Housing Authority, they need to follow their policies and deliver in a fair way, in a fair manner.
Meanwhile, in an effort to monitor activities at the estates, CCTV cameras will be installed and the live feed will be monitored by police. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. And turning overseas, anguish is turning into anger in Lebanon's capital, Beirut, as authorities and citizens try to find out who or what is to blame for the explosion on Tuesday. While the president is vowing to punish those responsible, documents show warning signs were missed or worse, ignored for years. And Whitney joins us now with business. Thanks, Jackie. In business tonight, entrepreneurs undergo financial literacy training. And in growing Fiji, raw youth undertake mangrove planting program. Stay with us. Pula, nadang gua prosa nangar se, gua erkeraki. Do televi ono baru ngan radio Fiji One, nando mui viti. Radio Fiji One, nando mui viti. Leading business, 75 micro and small entrepreneurs participated in Westpac's free financial literacy workshops held in Suva and Lotoka over the past few weeks. Business Basics workshop offered by Westpac helps participants understand what is needed to run a healthy business, how to determine when a business is making a profit, and how to plan for the future. Westpac Fiji's chief executive, Kip Hanna, says with gatherings of up to 100 people now allowed, they resume their training sessions. Hannah stressed that now more than ever, it is important that local businesses are supported through the COVID-19 crisis. Toyota Motor Corp posted a 98% plunge in the first quarter operating profit on Thursday as the coronavirus pandemic halved its global sales. We now join Sharon from HFC Bank with the latest in the stock market. Looking at the latest in Forex market, the U.S. dollar was in demand today after hitting a two-year low. But gains were kept by falling U.S. Treasury yields, ever-increasing numbers of COVID-19 cases, and the stalemate in the U.S. Congress over the latest stimulus package. Investors are keen to see further details on the U.S. employment situation in their jobs report later tonight. As the earlier claims report came in mixed, which showed few Americans sought jobless benefits last week, but it also showed that 31.3 million Americans were still receiving unemployment checks in mid-July. Meanwhile, in Australia, the Reserve Bank has warned that the jobs market will take longer to recover. The RBA has revised up their unemployment rate to a peak of 10% in December 2020, with the Australian economy to forecast to contract by 6% this year. <coughs> and that's all from your HFC Bank for this week. Vinaka. Looking at today's local exchange rates as set this morning, a strong day for the Fijian Sangomoli. It rose against the Chinese yuan, the US dollar, the PNG Kina, Euro and the Japanese yen. It weakened against our major trading partners Australia and New Zealand. Looking at the commodities, crude oil finally declined, closing at $41.92 per barrel. Gold continued to climb and was at $2,067 per ounce and silver also rose, closing at $28.88 an ounce. Mangroves not only protect shorelines from damaging storm and hurricane winds, waves and floods, but they also help prevent erosion. This was highlighted by Minister for Youth Praveen Kumar, who joined the use of Navuni Evi, Ra, to plant more than 600 mangrove seedlings. The mangrove planting program in Ra was made possible after the minister committed to the villagers to assist in the climate change activities undertaken by them. Kumar stressed his ministry is committed to encouraging youths to take action against climate change in their communities. And I would like to make an announcement uh, that we will take on that project and we will also do a nursery in partnership with Waiska. But in return, we need some support from you people as well because that can be done, but somebody will have to look after. And that's where the youths of this village come in. That's it from business tonight. We now join Tale with the latest in sports. Thank you, Whitney. Good evening in sports tonight. First football tournament of the year starts. And Fiji FA records massive profit. This and more after the break. My name is Neha.
Neha and I'm from Karavi and Mirchi FM it's hot Mirchi FM it's hot Defending champion Lambasa was held to a one-all draw by Suva in the Punjab's Battle of the Giants this afternoon in Lotoka. The two sides had to settle for a point after the 90 minutes, with both clashes agreeing that there is work to be done before the next match. Here are the goals from the match. That corner kick comes in with it in the way. Siotama who's come back. Lambasa get everyone back and Ravin Eskarat and inside. And and following through and Patrick Taronga and Patrick Taronga has opened the account Patrick Taronga who has been very quiet Big Sony as they would call him he does he does what's the dangerous part but it's Lambasa that keep the pressure again Rakai Sitiveni Rakai and the header through by Taniela Wanga and as I said the pressure was coming and Everybody knows that Lambasa is a, a tournament team and uh, and the first game kind of have a little of um, kind of get uh, start getting used to the game you know you um, trying to connect passes and the players are a bit uh, rusty and you know it's all about nerves here. Uh, yes it was I think so. A uh, bit casual we were too casual I think so we had our chances in the first half then in the second half and uh, we didn't take them. So, uh, Managed to get a goal, but uh, as I said, the plus point was that we came back, managed to equalize, we kept on pushing up. So that was something positive and I think so we have to plan better for the next game. In the first game of the day, Nandi thumped Navu a 4-1. The Jets setters were on fire and managed to net through two Joshua Tawaki goals in the first half. An own goal and a strike from Avinash Swami was enough for the three points. I think we were a little bit rusty because of the heat. Uh, the passes were not connecting well, but but they managed to play football, which was good. Uh, since Navua was defending with 10 men and having a one lone striker. Uh, you're playing in the hot sun at 12. It's not easy, but uh, getting three points is the, our mission. So we did it. So it's just about the recovery we have to do and prepare for our next two games. Fiji Football Association's new vice president, Ayaz Musa, says he is happy to have played his part in revitalizing the finances of the sport under the guidance of President Rajesh Patel. Musa was elected unopposed during the annual Congress today. Musa was today elected as Fiji FA's West VP and says he is ready to step up the challenge and also help the sport reach greater heights. Musa has also revealed that they have set a target of around $13 million for the Fiji FA net assets. With COVID-19 having a wicked havoc for sports all around the world, Musa says they will still not let the sports stay on the sidelines, but ensure all football continues. I was also part of the finance committee. We have built it up in the last uh, four years. We have basically built the whole finance up. From where Saukan is left till when Rajesh came in, we have uh, basically built up uh, under Mr. Patel's guidance. And you can basically see year in, year out, we have our net asset, uh, our net worth is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And probably our 2020 target would be like, we'll be reaching about our net worth would be around about 13 million. Fiji Football Association President Rajesh Patel says the art of running football as business has seen the sport rake in 2.4 million in profit for the last financial year. Patel also confirming that FIFA under its COVID-19 assistance will be giving $1.5 million to each of its member associations. Fiji FA in its annual congress in Lotoka today revealed the figure with Patel paying tribute to those who had worked hard in helping the association raking in the amount. We run an association transparently when you've got independent committees that runs it and vets every acquittals before expenditures and all those things. So this is something as an organization you have to make sure it is the general public's uh, money that comes through football but we as administrators have to make sure that we run the organization in a transparent and independent manner. The Silver Rugby side will be going in as underdogs against Nandi in round three of the Skipper Cup competition. The capital side has included high-profile players with the likes of Serpepeli Vularika and Alessio Nanduva in their lineup this week. 
Out for their second win, the defending Skipper Cup champions will be going into the match with humility. Karleni Tavi has more. Having won against Nandi over the last two years, this will not stop the Suicide from heading into the match with all guns blazing. Going there to play as normal and uh, um, our motto has been uh, humility every time. We are respecting Nandi. Ser Pepeli Vularika, who has been out of the rugby circuit for a few months due to personal reasons, has stepped in to represent the capital side. Suva manager Nemani Tuifangalele says they are happy with Vularika's inclusion. A high-profile player like uh, Vularika, uh, we, are, we, are, we are glad that he now uh, has uh, uh, answered the call to come and play. Uh, we know that he's got some... Uh, personal family problems which he has uh, um, uh, put that aside. Flying Fijians head coach Van Kota is impressed with the level of competition and support shown in the Skipper Cup. Well, I'm able to watch the Skipper Cup and the Fair Brother Trophy. So um, I've, um, I've enjoyed watching it. And, and um, all I can say to the players is um, there's a lot of enthusiasm. I love the crowd's location as well. Uh, Suva is set to face Nandi at Prince Charles Park tomorrow at 3 p.m. Karlini Tavi, FBC Sports. Neta Siri have set their standards high as they continue the campaign for supremacy in the top local 15s competition. Looking to take both cups this year, the Highlanders believe defeating Namosi in their fair brother Sullivan Trophy Challenge on Saturday will move them one step closer to also taking the Skipper Cup to the Highlands. The Highlanders know what they need to do come game day. Everybody tends to win and the goal is you set the standards high, the pie, you have to work hard all the time. And that's what we aim to do. If we are confident, I'm confident. Confidence is what the coach is placing on the younger players when they take the field against the Mossi. It's a challenge for us to keep winning players. But we will take them anyone who has what it takes. Uh, they, they say you, you, you're good enough, you're old enough. So age is not a factor with my passing. Not repeating past mistakes is something 22-year-old fly half to Indraki Samusamu Vondre hopes the team will be mindful of on Saturday. Goodness, we need to improve on uh, especially our exit and also our uh, structured place. Naita Siri takes on Amosi at 3 p.m. tomorrow at Thompson Park. Other games on Saturday will feature Taylevu taking on Nandronga at Ratu Dakumbo Park and Nandi hosts Suva at Prince Charles Park. The Suva-Nandi match will air live on FBC Sports. Luke Curry showed why he is destined to finally wear the New South Wales number 6 jersey this season after leading an undermanned Sydney Roosters team to a tradesman-like 24-16 defeat of St. George Illawarra last night. The loss leaves St. George Illawarra needing to win all six of the remaining matches to make the finals. That's it from Sports Tonight in New Media after the break. Facebook and Twitter have pulled down Trump's virus post. Details after the break. Hi, Bula. I'm CLI from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Angie is here with latest in weather. Welcome to the weather world. It's been a wonderful week and our Friday was the brightest, I must say. Sunshine was out in abundance. Now moving over to the west, bright and nice warming sunshine ruled here. The showers won't put any show, so that should be fine. Eastwards from back harbour to Suva, sunshine was here but then backed out by afternoon. There is high chance for showers later tonight. And up north, conditions were in the middle. The night will see a few sprinkles as well. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots, moderate to rough seas. Now turning to the tides, high tide at 9.32 p.m. with low tide at 3.30 a.m. Sunrise at 6.29. For tomorrow, bright conditions await. We have so many games to see and the weather seems just right. Tomorrow's temps, Suva, Nandi and Savu Savu will be cool at 28 degrees. And looking further on to Sunday, the best rest day before another week looks like a good one. 
That's all the weather news from my end. Have a wonderful weekend. It's back to Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, which four teams do you think will qualify for the Punches Battle of the Giants semifinals? Lambasa, because she was already strong, eh? And Ba, Ba too strong. And Latoka and Nedi. Uh, Rewa Lambasa, probably Ba and uh, Nandi. Because uh, this team are doing well for all of the season, and I uh, hope this team are gonna do best. I cheer for Suva, and uh, I think the other three teams will be Ba, Nandi, and uh, Rewa. I think Suva and uh, Nandi and Litoka, uh, no, and Ba, Ba, and Lambasa. Those are the four teams. I can uh, believe they can win. Subar, Rewa, Latoka, and can be Latoka, uh, Nandi. Why do you think so? Uh, because I see them playing soccer, they are playing good soccer. Recapping the main stories for tonight, loan approval requirements won't be relaxed. Seasonal ban on Kawakawa and Donu lifted. And Ministry apologizes for delay in social welfare payments. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. A poll question we're asking, should public transport have separate lanes during peak hour traffic? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, unusually serene day in the capital city captured by our very own Edwin Nunt. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos to email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj by Facebook page FBC News and our Twitter page at FBC underscore news. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow from the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. More the Mamba. Bula FM, number 2 NSR. Bula FM, number 2 NSR.